that's sequential LED things. Um, so I'm trying to explain them because you guys want to know about them. You don't want to know about angel eyes. Nope. I asked and you said nope. Not strips, not rings. Um, you just want sequential. So you get this weird stuff. What's up guys, my name is Chris Derefeev and thank you for joining me here on the Flyride channel. You're going to learn all about the parts, the techniques, and the business of building custom lights. And right now I'm at home, I'm not at the shop like I normally am for the intro, but I just wanted to talk about the other night. I built some crazy sequential tail lights and then had to deliver them down to San Diego for our customer BK. Big shout out to BK, thank you buddy. And uh, this was just what it looked like. I had to stay up super late and build them and I recorded all of it for you guys. So. You said you wanted to learn about sequential. It's probably the best way to do it, just by watching the grunt grind of actually putting everything together. And here it is. I'm taking a trip down to San Diego in just a bit. But before I do, we have to build some lights. Like they're literally just in eight million pieces right now. Freshly back from paint, Jack got them a very beautiful black color. And we just gotta solder them all up now. So this is cool because you guys asked specifically to see how to do the sequential lighting. So. I'm gonna give you just a little taste of how we do it on the GTR taillights. This is the older style and it's a lot easier to work with because there's no circuit board. It's just, we strip the wires, we solder on some little uh, resistors to make sure that the LEDs don't burn out, and then we hook them up to the ghost module. If you have similar lights that have wiring to the individual LEDs, I'm gonna shut up and start working on taillights. Kind of the downside to doing custom one-off sequential work. It takes forever. It's crazy. All this wiring, look at this. So I've got like a ton of little individual wires. They go to this little ribbon cable thing and I have four times as much work to do as I just finished. So I've got four rings. They each have 12 LEDs on them. That means there's 12 wires per ring, 24 wires per tail, 48 wires total. And each one of those wires has to be soldered both at the board with the resistor and at the ribbon cable so that I can connect it to the sequencer. So here's the deal. If you're going to do custom sequential work, prepare to do tons and tons and tons of soldering. And by soldering, I mean like a legit solder job, you know, like with heat shrink and all that good stuff. Because there's no point doing this stuff if you're going to try to connect it with a bunch of little push-in connectors or um, I don't know, if you're gonna do all that work to get it legit, you might as well just do it like all the way legit, not just like a little bit of the way legit. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna keep doing this four times as long as I've already done and hopefully fast motion is a little bit entertaining. I don't know, you tell me. We
YouTube, who was watching tonight when I was showing off those sequential lights earlier? Because we did a live stream, kind of let the cat out of the bag a little early with some of the sequential stuff, but like, I don't know, who cares? It's just because I was excited about it. And I'm trying to be like awake, because it's a grind night where I'm just by myself here in the shop, putting together crazy lights. We've got cool stuff on the bench that I gotta film before I leave, before we ship them out. And, and there's these bad boys right here. They are spinning and doing the woo-woo and all that good stuff. But before I go, I have to finish this job, this sequential job. So let's talk about that real quick. Like I actually did this in the live stream. We'll do it here on this video too so that it can live in infamy. Not really. All of these have individual wires that power up each LED. And so what we have to do is have something to connect them to so that then we can control them from a wire harness. Um, and in this case, you have this dope little remote that is gonna turn on different bonus modes. And to have this thing work, it's gotta have its little controller here hooked up to something wiring wise that runs through the car to tell these taillights what to do. And that is what this beautiful piece of, uh, I don't know, soldering and sleeving and all that. Just fancy pants jack wires. So this is a, a wire harness that is going to allow us to send the signal to the bonus modes on the sequencer. And the sequencer is what's gonna be connected here and uh, I should go get it. So there it is. I hope that wasn't as cheesy as I think it was gonna be. But maybe it was. Anyway, that's Ghost. So every one of those little dots right along the top there represents one of those little LEDs. And so it's gonna send power down this little header pin. Focus! You bastards! All right, those little pins, we're gonna crimp a connector on to all those wires. And then it'll plug into that. It'll be clean, fancy. Man, I'm sorry. That was a complicated way of explaining things. But that's sequential LED things. Um, so I'm trying to explain them because you guys wanna know about them. You don't wanna know about angel eyes. Nope, I asked and you said nope. Not strips, not rings. Um, you just want sequential. So you get this weird stuff. It's freaking late. I'm hungry. So I'm eating and YouTube how to ing, I guess. We're gonna talk about putting rubber butyl into these taillights to seal them up. So I don't typically do the the retro rubber, rubber butyl stuff because I have a special machine that does it. You guys don't, so I'm just gonna show you what you actually have. Uh I'm seal up these taillights. Need some pizza. Oh, it's cold and old. Old and cold. All right, so typically when you have retro rubber, it's a nice little Morimoto box. You open it up. It's got this cool little wound up roll of uh, this sticky black stuff. And uh, this one's empty. But I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna put it on the channel. And basically all I'm gonna do is stretch it out and then work my way all the way around this whole channel so that when I heat and reseal this thing back up, it's got actually more sealant. If you look, it's got gray sealant in it right now. That's okay, it's the same stuff as the black, so it's just ugly when you seal it that way. Um, there's actually gray retro rubber, so I recommend if you're doing GTR taillights like this, don't use the black if you have the option and you're gonna buy it. Um, and so we're gonna sell some specific kits just for this car so that you can have the correct sealant, you can have the good ghost sequencers, plug and play stuff that makes the whole install easier, um, and old cold pizza.
that will come in the kit. later. Five minutes later. Six hours later. It's morning time. It's about eight o'clock. I have to go wait outside of Depot for them to open so I can get some lights pack them up in the car and drive down to San Diego to install these lights that I stayed up till two o'clock in the morning working on. Did you actually hang in there that long? Because it was a super long video and it really wasn't even half as intricate as the build should be when it comes to a how-to. So I'm thinking about putting a course together that's all about the custom lights, building them start to finish, like stuff way too boring for YouTube. You guys tell me, is that something you'd be interested in? It's uh, gonna be like a maybe 10, 12 part course where it's got everything about lighting, the business of it, how to set everything up, and um, I don't know. I really, really, really wanted to do this for a while. I just need to know, is that something people really would want to do? To sign up, to take a class, to learn about things that you're not gonna learn in any other class. You into it? Let me know, comment below. Um, hey, and if you like the video, subscribe, that'd be dope. I'd like to see you guys around here more. I can see you. I see you. Bye.